Mr. ID in Japan, thanks for waiting. You're on the Atheist Experience with Matt and Stephen. Hello, good morning, Matt. Good morning. Can you hear me? A and you Stephen. Me? And Stephen, good morning. Good morning. And, and I will say it's appropriate for you to say it's good morning because even though it's, you know, a little after 5 p.m. here, I was actually up till 5.30 in the morning. So for me, it kind of is morning. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for picking up my call. And this is my first time to call here in the ATS experience. And I would like to share to you a topic that is so thorny and so emotional that whenever I discuss this in the online discussion forum, there are always uh, emotions coming. The topic is called the good and evil or long suffering or suffering or something like that. Well, you're talking about objections to divinity that address the problem of evil? Is that what you're... Yeah, uh, the reason why I would like to talk to you today because there are many people who are saying that uh, the reason why there is an evil, uh, they are saying, saying, saying something like this, if God is good and there is evil, then there is no God. Sure. Or if, if God is good, if God is powerful, and there's evil, then God has no power, or something like that. God yeah, has it, it, something like that. Yeah. Some kind of a bar bar variation. But but have I said that? No, uh, I've I've been hearing this in your show before, uh, okay. and many in many. So yeah, I, I'm on like record as not being a particular fan of the problem of evil as an argument against God, um, because I'm fine with the notion that you know God could be a incredibly powerful and just not be good. So it's only an argument against a very narrow description of God, where God must be, you know, powerful, benevolent, or powerful and benevolent, um, and and omniscient because he's got to know what's going on. Um, but as somebody who was a fundamentalist Christian for more than twenty five years, uh, I don't find it particularly an impressive line of argument. And also, when you talk about evil existing, I don't think I can view evil as something that exists. To me, evil is the label we put on things that are. Uh, contrary to what we would wish for or hope or would be viewed as positive. But I don't know what Stephen's take is on the problem of evil. And since you called in to address that, I'm just going to let him kind of steer this column. I, I reserve the right to jump in because I can't <laughs> not do that. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm just listening intently, really. And if, if, you're, if you're pointing out that the problem of evil is something that's hard for theists that believe in an all-powerful, all-loving God, then I'm right there with you. From all the conversations I've had, the problem of evil is one of the first logical um, breaks that a lot of uh, religious people that I know stumble upon. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, do you believe in God yourself or is it is it not the case? Yes, I believe in a Christian God okay. and I am, I am a freelance scientist. Mm -hmm. And I am a discoverer of the real topic of intelligence. I sometimes call this in intentional. So the reason why I'm calling you now, because uh, actually um, the reason why we have, we must have good and evil as a part of our phenomena in the universe, in our existence, because we are using intelligence for our existence as human beings. Can I, could I ask you to spell out what you mean by good and evil? I've got a feeling there may be something smuggled in there. Yeah, the good and evil. When when I define good and evil based on the biblical uh, biblical in mind, the way intelligence defines it, good is something that is useful for our human existence. Bad is evil, or is something that is is makes human uh, die or non help human to become become non existence. So, so, so could we put it this way? Could we say that good helps us achieve our goals and bad makes it so that we are not achieving our goals? No, because there are two goals. Goals for non-existence, for death, for killing people, for making them painful, or for there are also another goal that's making them alive and to, to become existence. So in the definition of good and evil, based on the biblical definition and the based on intelligence definition, is that good is always anything that helps humans to exist. And evil or bad or suffering or pain, something like that, something like that, with synonyms, are defined as anything or something that will harm, that will kill, okay, that will so make humans... 
non-existence. Yeah, this this is me jumping in. Uh, I don't I don't find that to be uh, uh, any sort of expositionary definition of it. It just it seems like you're kind of going with this. Good is what helps us, and evil is what not. And it's, tr- it's curious to me because as somebody who believes in Christianity, as you say you do, when I was a Christian, good is that which God commands, mm-hmm. and evil is that which is in conflict with what God commands. Correct. This is correct, actually. Because okay, but, it, but that, the problem is if you do that, then by definition God is good, so there's no evaluation of... how did you Do you believe that there's a devil? Of course, yes. So how did you determine that God is the good one and devil is the evil one? Uh, good question. The reason why God is good, because he's the God of existence. He makes, <laughs> he makes things exist. Okay, well, I, I don't devil, understand the, how that well, makes well, it good. Well, 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 the devil, the, the devil, the Satan, according to the Bible, if I, I, I know you know it, the devil kills and destroys. No, God kills so, and destroys, and God commands people to kill and destroy. If you go back, was the, was the serpent in the Garden of Eden? Was, do you think that was Satan? Yes. So that serpent told the truth, right? Yes. Okay, so the serpent told the truth and didn't kill or punish anybody, and God comes in and is mad that the serpent told the truth and that Adam and Eve disobeyed, and then he punishes them. So I, my question still stands. How did you determine that God is the good one and Satan is the evil one, especially when your own Bible has evidence to the contrary? No, uh, the reason why, first, the reason why God was mad on the time on Eve in the Garden of Eden, because human being had chosen to be, to, has chosen non-existence. No, 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 because they, they. No, no, wait, wait, they, they, you, must, you, must, you must, first, you must put the context according to what I put God the is. context in there. I'll read you Genesis if you want to. The question I'm, at, I'm asking you is, how did you determine that God was the good one and Satan was the evil one? You have to. Yeah, I, I, the answer is because God is the God of existence. That's not an answer. You might yeah, as well have said answer. God is the good one because Stephen is the podcaster of UK. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, no, it, no, existence no. isn't necessarily good. As a matter of fact, even within your own religion, this existence is said to be like dirty rags, and it is the existence to follow that is the one that is asserted to be good. But I have no evidence that it's actually a real existence or that it's good. So, once again, how did you determine that God was the good one? And Satan was the evil one. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I answered you incomplete. Uh, the Bible said that God is, is God is existent because He exists everything. And if you are going to use, I human don't understand beings, what existence. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I don't understand okay. what existence has to do with it. I'm asking, how did you determine that God was good? And you're immediately yeah, pointing to the Bible, but you're not even pointing to the Bible saying God was good. You're talking about existence. So what? What the hell does existence have to do with good? Yeah, because existence is good. How do you know that? <laughs> yeah, because uh, if because existence, uh, uh, if you are going, to, if you are going to design something, for example, if you are going to our human being, our human being uh, standard, we so, normally so would like. Here's the analogy that destroys that. I'm in agreement okay. that existence is good and existence is preferable to non-existing. Okay. But I would also say that having money is good. But just because I'm the person who gave you money doesn't mean that I am a good person. It's like, it's like okay, you were but, created but, by your mum, if you want to use the word creation in that way. Yeah, my uh, mom could be I'm terrible. That doesn't I'm make sorry. your mum automatically good. Uh, sorry, Matt, I, didn't, I never get the analogy. Can you repeat it again? I never get it. Sure. I think, I think having money is a good thing, but that doesn't okay. mean the person who gave me money is a good person. That's directly analogous to your position that existence is good, therefore the creator of existence is good. The guy who created the money isn't necessarily good. The person who gave me the money isn't necessarily good just because having money is good. So once again, how do you determine that God is good and, and the devil is the evil one? Oh, you're asking for an absolute good. You're, 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 you're the one you're, asserting you're, you're that God is asking, good. I don't even, I don't need, no, stop. Good. Thank you. I, I don't even believe that a God exists, but you're not only claiming okay. that a God exists, but that it is good. And I'm saying, how can you know that God is good? Yeah, because he is an absolute good. Yeah, yeah, you you had given me the clue because you your your analogy about human being is that we are you we are you. Hey, I'm an absolute good too. I am absolutely good. I just said so. That has to carry just as much weight as you claiming God is good, and I'm telling you that God doesn't exist and isn't good. And yet I exist and am good, (laughs) and I just proved it by saying that I'm absolutely good. No, you're not the creator of the universe, sorry. What what the hell does creating a universe have to do with being good? (laughs) You're not qualified, sorry. (laughs) I think think if we can 
this is the big issue that's happening here. When when we first asked you to define good and bad, you were basically yes. defining um, good is in what helps proliferate the human race, what what benefits the human race, and bad is what doesn't benefit us. That right. is a that, very different correct. definition because, for one, I can at least tentatively accept that. I can say, okay, I think notions of good and bad do depend on things, if not how you just described them, but relatively close to it. However, when you say that... When, when Matt asked you the same question and, and pushed a bit further, it turns out that you're defining good as something that can only come from God. So when someone like me grants that good and bad or, or you know, evil exists, I'm doing it strictly with the definitions that you gave uh, previously, not with these ones that you're working with now. So if you're defining good to be something, an edict from God or something that can only come from your creator, I don't see any evidence for that. It's it's kind of begging the question. Yeah, because you know, we we human being, we are using a standard. We are going to use a basis. We can use our own human being. That's basis. what I'm asking you. Standard. What yeah, what right. standard did you use to determine that God was good and Satan was evil? That's the question. Yeah, because uh, the reason why God is good, because according to the Bible, He's the God of existence. Why do I give a shit what good. the Bible says? Because of intelligence. Intelligence I would argue that God. because of intelligence, I absolutely should not care what the Bible says. Yeah. And uh, I'm absolutely first, good, which means I'm right. Do you want to know what I would first, do if I was the bad wait, guy? Wait, Matt, Matt, what would Matt, you do? First, I would write on a bit of paper, I'm the good guy, and give it to you. Yeah. First, you, you must nail down the topic of intelligence to, 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 to claim that you... So you're using your intelligence to read that bit of paper, right? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> no, I'm a no, good guy. no. <laughs> no. Let, let's try to keep this as simple as possible. There, you're, okay. there must be some standard by which you are judging God to be good and Satan to be evil. What is that standard? Because if the standard is God said so, well, then guess what? I am absolutely good because I said so. Okay, so the, the one, 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 one standard that I've seen based on intelligence and based on the Bible is that God was the one who designed life. And since he was the originator of life, he has the very right to take life. But hang Satan, on, hang on, hang on. Do, do, you, do you have children? But Satan, but Satan has... Do you have children? Not create... What? May I ask if you have children? Yes. Do you have the right to kill them? No. Then why is it different for God? Because I did not create my children. It, it, what does it matter I did if not you create, create life? What? So if I... If I... <laughs> That went over my head. That's the level of... So, first of all, I reject your bald-ass assertion that because someone can create something, they then can destroy it without it being viewed as immoral. But second because of all... You, you don't, you, but we're asking you don't what the standard is, and you have yet to give any sort of standard by which you can determine that God is good. And by the way, are you a flawed being? Flawed? What do you what, what what do you mean by flawed? Are you a perfectly reasoning being? Oh, no, I don't think so. I am. I, I, I don't think so either, because I don't think I am. We agree but I'll on one claim thing. that I am for the sake of argument. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. So, if you have some standard by which you're judging God, how do you know it's the right standard? Yeah, the reason why it is the right standard because it works in reality. No, it doesn't work in reality because I, there's no evidence for a God actually existing in reality and there's evidence against the proposition that the God of the Bible is good because, for example, if you're a good God, would you ever tell people to do something that is immoral? No, no there is no okay. immoral in God. Is it immoral to own other people as property? Yeah. If, God say, if God say yes, no. Fuck that. This reminds me of this. This is, this is by definition special pleading now because you know where we're going. You, you, yeah, no, go on. No, no, no. You, you've defined good as whatever this, this being with all power, etc., demands is good. And you've literally just said, if that being says that owning humans is good, you're saying, yes, that's good. Anyone with any yeah. kind of integrity knows that that is bollocks. I mean, this, this goes back to the Greeks and the Euthyphro dilemma. 
uh, with respect yeah, to piety, that's but that's it can I, change for this, which is, it, is something good because God says so, or does God say so because it's good? Because if it's the former, then what you have is divine command theory, and you don't have anything about morality related to goodness. You just have a list of this is what God allows and this is what God doesn't allow. So that when God allows slavery, it's good. When God tells you to kill your child, it's good. When God tells you to go slay all the Midianites and keep all the young virgins for yourself, it's good because God said so. Well, I reject that because I have an understanding of morality and good and evil that transcends what the ancient Israelites wrote down without any evidence. Oh, I don't, I don't accept that because you're not the creator of the universe. I'm sorry. I, uh, yeah, and I reject okay, your yeah, assertion sorry, that no. I reject your assertion that someone needs to be the creator of the universe in order to have an understanding of morality. So now, where do we go? I'm going <laughs> to so reject your bald ass assertions. <laughs> this is this is well, so think, circular. It's it's uh, God exists. Yeah, How do you know God well, exists? Because good exists. How do you know good exists? No, 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 because the, God exists. Uh, the reason. The reason why God exists is because of intelligence. What? That, 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 okay, that's not intelligence. that's not an argument. That's barely a comprehensible sentence. Ironically, what, what unintelligible. Mean, what do you mean God exists because of intelligence? Because every time you've uttered that, if in fact God exists because of intelligence, you are disproving God in the act of saying that unintelligent phrase. Well, I maybe I will call uh, uh, next time for this topic because this, this topic is too long. But for now, I would like to talk about the good and evil. And I know that we never agree with each other, Weren't but we doing I would that? like to share to you. you no, know, I mean I, I just I just would like to share to you that uh that my 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 point, my input about good and evil. Well why don't you want to share your point about intelligence if that's the key factor? Well, because I 